All right, welcome back to this episode. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to share, like, and everything else that you want to do with this video. But there was a question a couple years ago when the New York Mets hired Lu Luis Rojas. There was a question about was he the right choice, was he the right manager, and all the different factors that it went into that hire. And I had some pretty strong opinions about that. If you listened to the podcast back then when he was hired, I had some really definitive reasons, in fact five reasons, why I thought he was the perfect choice. And there were a lot of people that disagreed with me, especially over the, the, the time that has elapsed since then. A lot of people have felt that I was way out in left field, that I was wrong, and some still think I'm wrong. As we record this right now, we are just starting the 2021 season. We're about two weeks into the season. And so a lot can still happen this year, and a lot has already happened with Luis Rojas. But in this episode, I'm going to talk about the five reasons that I believe and still believe the New York Mets got it right with Luis Rojas. If you agree, if you disagree, leave a comment, let me know, tell me where I'm wrong, tell me where I'm right, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Sportscasters Club Radio Show, where it's all about becoming a better sportscaster and a better sports fan. And now, your host, a man who began his sportscasting career by sleeping on hotel floors during road trips, Rick Schultz. Welcome to another episode of the Sportscasters Club Radio Show. I am Rick Schultz. Thank you for joining us. You can get a lot more at sportscastersclub.com. Most of the time we spend these episodes talking about sportscasting issues. But this one is just going to be a quick little episode to really get into a topic of the day in sports. And that is the New York Mets new manager, Luis Rojas. And I'm going to touch on that for just a few minutes, but before I do, I really have to thank everyone who's been listening to the Sportscasters Club radio show. I want to thank the people, especially in these towns, because I'm able to see where people listen from, and these are some of the top towns and cities and countries across the world who have been listening to us, whether it be on, on Apple iTunes, Stitcher, um, on the Buzzsprout site, wherever you get your podcast, These are some of the places that people listen from. Rotterdam, New York, thank you for listening. Beacon, New York, Orlando, Florida, LA, California, Fresno, California, Syracuse, New York, thanks for listening. Mawa, New Jersey, Gloversville, New York, and of course, Manila in the Philippines. Thank you so much for listening to us on the Sportscasters Club radio show. We appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing and for sharing the program. Let's take a moment to go back in time. Let's think, where were you 25 years ago? Think back to the date, November 3rd, 1995. Where were you? What were you doing? What stage in life were you? in at that point in time, November 3rd, 1995. I remember where I was that particular day. It was cold. It was chilly. It was a day that was unlike other days for a lot of reasons that I'll get into. I was sitting in my dorm room at Fordham University in the Bronx, New York City. The premier University for sports broadcasting because of WFUV radio. That's why I was there. I attended Fordham University to learn from the great Marty Glickman and to become a better sports broadcaster. And Marty was a huge, huge mentor. And my career grew from there. But on that day, November 3rd, 1995, I sat in my dorm room and I had WFAN as usual on my radio 
It's one of those little dial radios at the time, not the digital kind we have now. Certainly wasn't on a phone. It was on a real radio, a little static, coming through the dorm room, Finley Hall, on the Rose Hill campus of Fordham University. And on that particular day, New York City blew up. The sports world I'm talking about. The sports community in New York blew up that day. And it was a fire because the talk of the day, the big news of the day, was Joe Torre. Joe Torre hired by the New York Yankees to be their next manager. Buck Showalter and the Yanks agreed to part ways. And George Steinbrenner named Joe Torre the new manager. The papers blew up. The radio airwaves blew up. And Joe Torre was almost laughed out of town before he began. Baseball fans and New York Yankee fans, the majority felt like, who is this and how can this be our replacement for Buck Showalter? Showalter had a certain personality. He was demanding. He was detailed. He was serious. He was structured. And now you're going to bring in Joe Torre, a guy who has never been a great manager, whether it be St. Louis, the Mets, didn't have a great reputation. Joe Torre? This is going to be who George Steinbrenner picks as the New York Yankees manager? Well, obviously, in the 25 years since, we've seen everything that happened. And it was the perfect man, mainly because of temperament. And that's something you often can't see when you look back on just a manager's record and their body of work up until that point. And Joe Torre had the perfect temperament for that group of New York Yankees. And we know what happened since. Thousands of wins, the World Series championships, and everything that the Yankees became. Culminating recently, obviously, with Derek Jeter in the Hall of Fame. So that brings us to today. January 24th, 2020. I'm not saying Mickey Calloway is Buck Showalter by any stretch. And I would have loved, ironically, Buck Showalter as the choice the Mets made. But it was Carlos Beltran a couple months ago, and that didn't work out. We talked about that a little bit regarding the Houston Astros and the cheating. But they made their choice, their second choice, as it were, Luis Rojas. And I think this is the absolute perfect pick. Perfect. 38 years old. A baseball man through and through. And I think this will be the perfect manager for this team. And I know you've heard the different opinions over the past week. Chris Carlin specifically, who does a tremendous job on ESPN Radio New York, hosting in the evenings. He's one of the, the really fantastic guys in the business and also an excellent sports talk host. His opinion is that if Rojas wasn't ready, if he wasn't ready... Two months ago, why is he ready now? And I think a lot of that just has to do with maybe Beltron was slightly up the pecking order. And so, yeah, you could say maybe a 38-year-old Rojas wasn't ready and wasn't where Beltron was and wasn't as accomplished and ready to take over the reins immediately. But Beltron didn't work out. So just because you weren't the number one choice doesn't mean you weren't a capable choice. Doesn't mean you can't succeed. If you're talking about two or three or maybe even four or five candidates that have a great chance to do well, maybe Beltron was the top pick, but doesn't necessarily mean just because of that, it's all relative. It doesn't mean that Rojas can't succeed. What I see in Luis Rojas is very similar to what the Toronto Blue Jays have done with Charlie Montoyo a guy who came up through the minor leagues. He had a brief stint as a player in the big leagues, but then he spent 20 years in the minor leagues, moving up the ranks, a bilingual speaker, a fiery guy, and someone who is extremely well-respected in baseball, Charlie Montoyo, now managing the Toronto Blue Jays. And I see a, a great correlation with Luis Rojas and the Mets. And I'm hoping we see that play out. There are about... Five reasons I think Luis Rojas is a terrific choice for the New York Mets. Number one is pedigree. And when you're, when you're raised 
by your father, Philippe Lou, that's baseball. And baseball's in your blood. When your brother is Moise Salou with Mets ties, not quite a Hall of Fame player, but a strong, solid player for so long. And Rojas, this week during his press conference, talked about his brother, Moise, and how, how much impact he's had in him as a person and as a baseball professional. And I think that's very, very important because there's a lot more than just the X's and the O's, but it's how to manage people, how to approach baseball day in and day out. It's a long grind, and, and your, your approach, your philosophy, your mentality, a lot of it is just learned by picking it up instead of reading a book. And Luis Rojas has been steeped in that his whole life. I think probably the most important thing for a manager, especially a new manager, is having player buy-in. And this New York Mets team, predominantly a young team, with a lot of the core guys like McNeil, Alonzo, some of the other core pieces. Yes, you've got some, some possible big-time contributors that are more veteran players like Cano, Cespedes, who, who knows what he's going to do. But when you think about the core being a young core, You've got to have that buy-in, and Luis Rojas does. And we saw it this week, just from the players who would tweet, make their opinions known, and they really love this guy. That's a big part of it. I mean, let's be honest. How many, how many games does a manager really impact in baseball? It's not like football where the game plan is so important. It's not like basketball where, well, I think actually basketball is the players more than the coach as well. But in baseball... How much does the manager really impact it? Maybe five games either way over the course of 162? Five? So if the Mets had a different manager last year, would they have made the playoffs? Maybe. Was it all Callaway's fault? I gave Callaway a lot of credit. Second half of the year, I gave Callaway a lot of credit for having that team not quit and having them come back and have that run and that push and that surge in the second half. Mickey Callaway deserves a lot of credit for that. I'm not saying he should have stayed, and I think the Mets made the right choice, but he deserved a lot of credit for that, in my opinion. But I think player buy-in is something Rojas has that's very important. Number three, third reason, being bilingual. I mentioned Charlie Montoyo in Toronto, many other managers around Major League Baseball. I think it's a, a very important thing to be able to relate and speak the language of up-and-coming prospects or potential free agents. And I think... It's not a necessity to be bilingual, but it helps. It helps big time when a lot of your players speak Spanish. And so he can relate to players across multiple spectrums. And I think that's very important to try to get the best out of your team. The analytics, he's a believer in analytics. And I think from Brody Van Wagenen's perspective, that was important because Brody wants to have some say-so and control and, and have analytics play a big part of it. That's the game today, so I think that's also something Luis Rojas brings to the table. And I think when you're talking about a new a new owner coming in, hopefully within the next few years transitioning in, I think the, the general manager wants to still have his stamp on the team. And I think he's going to have that with Rojas. And another point, I think this was really make or break for Van Wagenen because he knows that new owner is coming in. And Brody Van Wagenen had to make the decision that was going to be the best chance for the Mets to win now. Best chance. And he felt, he felt that his best chance to win and his best chance to remain the general manager of the Mets was Luis Rojas. And that's after interviewing many candidates. And if he felt that way, I've got confidence. That that's just another reason I think this was a great choice. And finally, the fifth reason I think Luis Rojas was an excellent choice is because he doesn't come in as this commanding personality, this overbearing personality, which some of the other candidates may have been, I think big-time free agents down the road over the next few years are going to feel a lot more comfortable coming into that environment, especially the ones with big egos that maybe want to be the man, and they're not going to feel like they're going to be overshadowed by the manager. So when you're talking about free agents or people that could sign... Listen, it's always driven by the money. Players generally go where the biggest the biggest check is going to come from. 
And so if the Mets can open up the wallets and open up the checkbooks, they're going to be able to bring in top talent. But I think having a manager that's not going to be someone out there stealing the spotlight, I think that's going to be important too, and that's going to help. So those are five reasons. I think Luis Rojas is the perfect manager. I think he's in the mix as a kind of in the mold of a Charlie Montoyo in Toronto. And I think the New York Mets are poised for great things because they've got buy-in, they've got young talent, and I think the New York Mets are only going to see great things. Are we going to look back at this day, January 24th, 2020, and say, wow, that was just like November 3rd, 1995, where the New York Yankees turned the page and started a new era? Are we going to have that be what this day is for the New York Mets? Only time will tell. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sportscasters Club radio show. Thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you at sportscastersclub.com. Thanks for listening to the Sportscasters Club radio show at sportscastersclub.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you will never miss an episode. And thanks for liking, sharing, posting reviews, and spreading the word.